Welcome to The Kitchen Table, a show dedicated to helping you escape diet culture, gain trust with food, honor your body, and live a brighter life. Hello, happy new year. Welcome back to The Kitchen Table. I'm so glad you're here. I'm your host, Alicia Brown, an anti-diet registered dietitian nutritionist. And hey, it's a new year. It's 2021, which means it's all unicorns, sunshine, and rainbows, right? (laughs) Okay. I know that's not true, but what I know is true is that we're all holding on to a new hope that this year is going to be different than last year. And so naturally at the start of the new year, we set goals and what we really want is to inch ourselves closer to living the lives we imagine, to being the people that we really want to be. And I think that's so beautiful in the new year that we feel like we have this clean slate, a new fresh start to really think about our life in the past year and how we want it to be different this new year so that we can get closer to, again, like living that life we imagined and being the best version of ourselves that we can be. And so what I want to talk about today on the show is not to sabotage ourselves this new year, (laughs) to actually feel empowered with goal setting, to feel like we're not setting ourselves up to fail so that we can feel accomplished every single day as we work toward the goals that we set for ourselves and how we really want to improve our health and our work life and our relationships to then inch ourselves closer to living the life that we really want and to being the people that we can really be. And so often, so, so often, At the beginning of the new year, we set ourselves up for failure. And maybe this has been you. It's definitely been me. You know, because if you're anything like me, like you're ambitious, you get after it. Um, You think big. Um, You pour into everybody else. So when you're setting goals, the thought of finally pouring into yourself, you go zero to a hundred, you know? (laughs) And maybe for you, it's been like every new year is every new diet. Every new year is a new supplement plan, a new weight loss program, a new gym membership, like maybe in the health, in the realm of health and your health life, that's what it's looked like every year for you. And so in this episode, I want to talk about that and how we can reject the dieting mentality altogether because look, I promise you, if you've done it in prior years or maybe even multiple times within those years, um, there's no new diet, new trend, new program, a new supplement regime, new cleanse, new detox, <laughs> new surgery even, that's going to give you the lasting health longevity that you're wanting, weight loss that you're wanting, right? So we need to unpack that. We need to know how we can live better and differently this new year and improve our health outcomes that has to come with rejecting diet culture. That's one segment of the, of the conversation that I want to have. And within that, I want to talk about how we can actually craft goals and expectations and, and plan so we don't set ourselves up for failure, so that there's no self-sabotaging in the new year as we craft new goals, right? I see it time and time again in our practice when we set goals and set these expectations. Sometimes they're so ridiculous looking back at them, you know, sometimes they felt achievable at the time, but then we lost sight of them. We even forgot about them. We um, weren't able to accomplish them in the ways that we wanted to, right? So we can feel like failures. And every year, if we start off, a month in, feeling like we're a failure, how does that really make us feel when we think about the life that we want to live, right? That end goal of like, how do we want every day to look like? How do we want it to be different or better than last year? If we never feel like we're making progress towards that, we really get good at reciting this negative narrative in our mind that we're not able to make that forward progress. And what's true is that you are able to make that forward progress. And I want you to see that every single day so that you can feel like you are getting closer to living that life that you want. And maybe that life that you want to live isn't so far away. (laughs) Maybe uh, being that person that you really want to be and living that life that you really want to have, maybe it's not so far away. And what I want you to see in this episode today is that if we can plan and craft our goals in a way that's flexible, where we feel like we can't fail, we're going to feel like more of a success on an everyday basis. We're going to feel more empowered in an everyday basis. And that's what's going to feel 
uh, fuel us so that we can move forward and continue to become better and better version, versions of ourselves every day of this new year. That's what I want for you. That's what I think that we all want as we look forward to this new year and having this fresh new start. Not setting ourselves up for failure, but instead setting ourselves up to live empowered every single day so that we can really live embodied and honor our bodies and live the life that we want. Okay, cool. Before we dive into that and unpack all of that, I want to remind you to please take out your phone right now and hit that subscribe button. That's a magical button that lets you know every time a new episode rolls out of the kitchen table. So every Monday and Thursday, you'll get a little bing. If it's set up on your phone, you'll get a little notification that says, hey, Alicia's at the kitchen table. You should join. And then you should join me at the kitchen table. Please don't hesitate also to rate the show. I so love reading the messages that you send there. Um, It really fuels me to keep pumping out episodes two days a week for you. So that's so great. Thank you so much for giving a five-star review. And lastly, if you find this episode on starting off in the new year fresh, if you find this episode useful or helpful to you in any way, don't hesitate to screenshot and share this episode. You can find me at aliciabrown.rdn on Instagram, Alicia Brown, A-L-I-C-I-A Brown, (laughs) B-R-O-W-N. I never know why I spell that. Alicia Brown dot R-D-N on Instagram. That stands for Registered Dietitian Nutritionist. Okay. So moving forward, um, what I think sometimes we do so wrong in the new year, especially when we think of our health, is we just say, okay, diets worked in the past for about a couple of months. It was my fault that the diet didn't work. I'm just going to hop on a new diet again so I can lose that weight and hopefully I can just continue on the diet. And what I really want to start just talking about dieting right now is that diets don't, um, diets don't work. I don't know how to say it like more eloquently, more beautifully. Um, I don't, I don't know how to like change the words around. Like Yoda would say like diets work, not (laughs) diets work will not. (laughs) Maybe the, maybe the Yoda version clicks with you in a different way, but like, no, diets don't work. And the new, the latest, the greatest diet detox supplement program, um, whatever kind of surgery or regime that's out there for weight loss, nope, still not going to work long term. I want us to think about the long term this new year. Yes, I am sure that all of those things, if you deprive yourself enough, um, will yield weight loss. You might also lose a lot of water. You might also lose a lot of muscle. But yes, you might lose some weight. But your body and your body's biology is not geared to sustain that weight loss for for a prolonged amount of time. Your body wants freedom, flexibility, autonomy over the food choices that it makes and how it wants to move. That's why diets don't work is because our body literally, our body's biology literally rebels against the diet and says, what? No way. I know that food is available and that I can allow myself permission to eat it and that I have to send you huge cues of like hunger, hunger, hunger until you finally meet my needs, right? So that's like the body's response to to um, to depletion or to um, to starvation is to like give you huge signals, and this just really perpetuates the feast and famine, restrict and binge cycle. So not only do diets not work, but they are so detrimental from like a metabolic standpoint, we really decrease the body's metabolism. It says, okay, we got to conserve. There's a famine here, right? We decrease the body's metabolism. And on top of that, our mind is like going through such a crazy mess trying to think about what it can eat, what it can't eat, what's allowed, what's not allowed, what's good or what's bad. And it gets really into like this black and white rigid thinking about food. And it's really because we want to improve our health. And that's like such a great intention. Of course, we we all want to improve our health. But at the same time, we are we we're not doing a service to ourselves. Our mental health is decreasing and our physical health is too. So beginning the new year, if you're thinking about improving your health, don't let it start with another diet. Don't let it start with another diet. There's not another diet out there that's going to help you in the ways that you need to succeed long-term. 
Yes. I've had clients share with me that like, they've learned a lot from diets. Maybe they've learned to cook. Maybe they've learned to try new things. Maybe they've learned kind of how they feel in their body a little bit, like how these newer foods kind of makes them feel. Maybe they've tried on new movement they haven't before. Like all of that's great. Okay. But there is a way to explore that without the rigidity and the, the like success or failure binary thinking that diets really promote. And I'm not usually like, so like straightforward in these shows, right? I really want you to say, and I still do right now to like, let your body lead, but I feel like it's unethical almost in a way, like truly unethical to like have these weight loss programs, to have these detox teas and supplement programs that really promote weight loss and health, because I just truly feel they do it to service to humanity. And I really want to say that. And I really mean it. That's why I moved over from the weight loss realm to intuitive eating myself. I saw in my clients and you can listen to like one of the first episodes I put out there of how I transitioned my business from the weight loss paradigm into the intuitive eating paradigm. I talk all about this on how I had to make that shift because once I saw all of the guilt and shame that my clients were experiencing, I was like, wow, I got to do things differently. This is not working. This is not sustainable. This shouldn't feel this way. They shouldn't have this guilty attitude toward food. What is wrong? And the solution that I found to that was intuitive eating. And I stand by that right now. I stand by that. That's what I'm here. That's what we're talking about is food and body stuff and how to repair those relationships so that we can literally live the lives we imagine without this food and body stuff getting in the way, without weight loss seriously sucking our time and our effort and our energy. And so as you go to craft planning your goals for this year, I want you to really think about those three things as you maybe consider falling into the temptation of diets. Really think about these three things. How do I want to manage my time, my effort, and my energy? How do I want to spend any, any, because it's, this is a limited resource. We only have so much time. We only have so much effort that we can give. We have so much energy that we have to spend. How do we want to live our lives? What's the end result? And what can I do today to inch a little bit closer to that end result with my time and my efforts and my energy? So when you think about the really most important things in life, and maybe you've listened to the two prior podcasts that I did last week around Christmas about the most deep and meaningful things in our life um, and love and relationships, really, Um, when you think about those two things, think about really how you want to manage your time and your effort and your energy so that we can really, really, uh, capitalize on the greatest things in our lives, you know? And really a question that I have for you is, is weight loss really contributing to the life that you want? And is weight loss really, um, helping you be a better person if it does take so much of your time? If it does take so much of your mental effort, even as well as physical effort and energy, if it's depleting your time and your effort and your energy, is it helping you better show up to live that life you want and be the person you want to be? I don't think so for so many of us, even though we're painted this picture by diet culture that says, yes, with thinness comes happiness. And with thinness comes a clean house and the spouse that you've dreamed of and the career that you want. Like we are painted this so false paradise, false picture of paradise. That thinness is the gateway to happiness. And I cannot tell you in more ways than one that it's not. There's no better way for me to say rather that there's that thinness will not grant us this life that we want. But even so, we pour all of our time and effort and energy, especially at the beginning of every new year, towards weight loss and towards dieting and towards the gym membership and et cetera. And that, again, leads to that binary black and white thinking that leads to the food is good or bad, that leads to I'm either exercising or not exercising, that leads to um, I'm either losing the weight or not losing the weight. And every time, because diets are set up to fail, we fail ourselves in that or we feel like we fail ourselves when really the diet failed us. So in response to that, how do you want to manage your time and your effort and your energy instead? So say that like, 
okay, you're beyond it. You're not following the next diet. You're not going to hop on the next supplement. What do you do instead? That's a great question. Well, how should I plan if I want to really listen to my body? How should I plan if I don't want to set myself up for failure? Well, again, think of how you want to spend your time and your effort and your energy. And what are your outcomes that you're looking for with your health, right? Like asking yourself questions every day of like, what movement could feel good for me today? What food feels good for me today, right? Those are great questions to start off with that you can feel like you get instant results with, right? Wow, like you know, Tyler and I have this stationary Peloton bike. Okay, so maybe the Peloton feels good today. If I put in my calendar, ride the Peloton five days a week, guess what I do? I don't ride it once. I'm already like, oh, oh, this doesn't sound right. This doesn't sound good. I don't even end up hopping on it. But if I have the option of writing it in my planner or say, okay, maybe, maybe like from 2 to 2.30, 2 to 2.45, 2 to 3 maybe on Mondays where I have the time option to ride the Peloton or option to engage in movement. What movement sounds good for me today? Like that is a great way to plan. It's like we've blocked off time to do things that we feel like we can enjoy. And that's so cool and so good and so important. And the same can go for food, right? So like maybe making some type of plan for how what meals you want for the week. There's nothing dieting about that when you're just thinking about what you want to feed yourself and your family potentially, right? Like, okay, on Mondays, do you want to have like seafood option? On Tuesdays, you want to do like Mexican? On Thursdays, you want to do Chinese food or takeout? On Fridays, what what does that look like for you? What seems most manageable and practical like this week? And is planning for that supportive? And how okay are you with totally botching the plan if it doesn't seem right or good, if you're not feeling physically well enough for it, if you're not feeling mentally up for it, if you're feeling like you need a rest, should you plan that out too? Are you planning some fun in your calendar as well? Like as you're planning, what can feel most flexible and most supportive, but also most forward thinking as you plan out your days and your weeks and your months? And I had a tip from a client that she shared with me today that I'd like to share with you as well. And she put like optional things in her planner and said, oh, okay, like maybe, you know, during this time I'll move and I'll make these things for the week and rada rada. And she said at the end of every page, she said, she wrote down like, and that's okay. So she didn't like put the weight of the world on her shoulders as she's crafting these goals. She's not setting high expectations. She's just planning what might feel best and what what might be most realistic and practical for each day. And if it happens in that way that she's planned, that's great. If it doesn't happen then that way, she has this saying that really brings about like this feeling of acceptance that says, and that's okay. So that is so in contrast to like the binary black or white thinking, right? There's no rigidity there. It's just like, oh, and that didn't happen and that's okay. It's like, oh, actually, no worries. Here's some compassion towards that. There's a reason why that didn't happen. That's cool. Moving on, right? So if we really craft goals at the beginning of the year and we like set them in stone, we can really feel like when we don't live up to them or we don't accomplish the things or whatever happened, right? Like we can feel again, like, oh, this is a failure. We've done something wrong. We're not able to live up to our expectations. We're not able to do the things or accomplish the things that we want to do. Instead, what if we just like really loosened our grip a little bit, saw what was most practical, feasible, really were clear about how we want to dedicate our time and our effort and our energy to things, And also allowed ourselves some grace and some compassion by saying like, and that's okay. I wasn't able to ride the stationary bike today and that's okay. Um, I I was feeling kind of tired today. I had some extra work to do today. I did laundry instead and that's okay. You know, that allows us the authority to make decisions in the moment without feeling like we're constantly letting ourselves down. And I feel like that is so important. That way we can still feel empowered to really see what our options are like the next day. Also, I think this can be so true in like building habits or routines. You're going to hear a lot of talk in the new year about new habits, new routines, 21 days to spark a new habit. 
I mean, yes and no. If they're not like embodied practices, then they're going to feel really forced. They're going to feel really forced and they're going to be not sustainable. Um, And so how can we add ourselves, how can we grant ourselves a little bit more flexibility and embodiment intentionality when crafting these goals? And how can we let it be okay when on a daily basis, we stray away from our planning, stray away from um, maybe what our expectations or thoughts were for that day to really lower the bar on those expectations so that we can feel like we can honor our bodies in the moment instead, because we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know what's going to happen the day after tomorrow, but what we can do now is get our body's needs met today and plan a vision for what tomorrow might look like. And after so many tomorrows, so many days, weeks, months, we can look back on the year and think, wow, this year I was really able to honor myself in a different way. I was able to pour into others more fully in a different way because I was pouring into myself. I managed my time more effectively. My efforts were towards things that I felt like were really important. I was better able to manage my energy as well so that I could more fully show up. Like that's what we want to say. Um, you know, that that's, that's at least to me what success really looks like. I know for me also, like what's draining of my time and effort and energy, social media. I already set like a time limits uh, a couple weeks ago on like how I want to use them. And it's been such bliss. I actually, I follow those time limits and it's like, I just got hours of my life back, right? Like, holy crap. How am I spending that time? How am I wasting my life? What are some ways am I wasting my life? How can I reclaim that? And if you're feeling like you're not following a diet anymore, but you want to still plan your life, think about what you want your meals to look like for the next week, not the diet. Think about what you want movement to look like for the next week, not for weight loss, just for yourself. And also, how can you have that be more flexible? How can you have that be more fun? How can it still be okay to not meet what the plan was? How can it still be okay to venture from the plan and to say that your body had different needs and that's okay? That's how I think that we can actually inch, inch, inch towards honoring ourselves more, which helps us better show up, which helps us be better versions of ourselves. And also, um, which helps us really be in gratitude for the life that we have and the life that we want to live. That was a lot. That was a lot of like deflect diet culture talk and planning and banishing expectations and (laughs) feeling empowered in the new year talk. Wow. That was a lot. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. Again, don't hesitate to screenshot and share if this was any use for you. You can find me on Instagram at aliciabrown.rdn. I am taking on a few new clients that are interested in the three month intuitive eating intensive this new year but a lot of my time is being dedicated to this new program that I'm launching in February. So if you are interested in being an early bird to sign up for that program, send me a DM on Instagram at aliciabrown.rdn and we will connect there. I will give you all the details about the program as they roll out. I could not be more excited about it. We're going to be talking intuitive eating, but yes, way beyond intuitive eating on how we feel in our clothes and how we're cooking in our kitchens and ultimately to feel more at home home, in our homes, at home, in our kitchen, at home, in our clothes, and at home in our bodies. So that's what this new program in February is going to be all about. I couldn't be more excited about it. I will be sharing more with you every week here at the kitchen table, but until Thursday, have a great day. Set those, set those flexible goals and just feel that bliss of the new year, ride that expansion all the way home, and we will talk soon. Take care.